Good morning! Welcome back to another episode of Chris Dyer's Creative Friends, the super awesome podcast show where me, your artist friend Chris Dyer, talks to all his amazing creative friends. Today I'm going to the top of a mountain out here in Asheville, North Carolina to reconnect with my good old friend Sweet Melissa, who is a really talented visionary artist who I've known from the festival scene for over 10 years and we got to have a really good long conversation about art, career, being a mother, philosophical thoughts, and so much more. So I hope you will enjoy. Blessings! Between the women and a man, Chris Dyer and his creative friends, darling. Ooh, 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 ooh. Hi, Melissa. Hey, how's it going? Pretty good. Thank you so much for having me over in this very beautiful studio. Thanks for coming. Welcome. Oh, thanks. Are you proud of, of this lovely place you've created for yourself? Oh, yes. This is an absolute dream. I've been working really hard. It was almost unlivable when we bought the place. And um, I've put new floors in, painted scraped ceilings and made it into my dream space and I'm beyond words thankful for it. It's You've done the hard work to earn the dream studio. Yes, the with, dream studio. With, Going from working on a couch and a coffee table to eventually having a space was, it's the dream. Nice. How does that feel to manifest your ideal reality as an artist? I'm still pinching myself really and the way that really puts it in perspective is if I think of myself at 20 years old and I saw this I'd be blown away I'd really be like holy shit like this really happened and you really did it and it's really um when your top choice of what you want to do with your life comes about you can't ask for anything more than that uh-huh that's awesome. The view is great. Yeah, can't beat it. It was, um, I really wanted to find a place that I could see the clouds. Mm -hmm. A lot of my art all has clouds in it, and it was pretty you got important. You the great reference yeah, right there. I was like, I need to see the sky, see the dance. Uh-huh, that's awesome. So we're in, like, what, Black Mountain? Yeah, Black Mountain, North Carolina. It's in between... Um, right on the east side of Asheville. I'm in between Black Mountain and Asheville. Uh-huh. And uh, those mountains are quite dark, so I could imagine yeah, why you call the it. The mountains we're looking at is the Blue Ridge Parkway actually. Okay. And so when you hear about people driving down the Blue Ridge Parkway, that's the mountain top they're driving. Uh -huh. That's what we're And you're on a mountain itself. Yeah. It's not the Blue Ridge Parkway, but it's just a different mountain that faces. Uh -huh. And it's one of the tallest mountains in this whole part of the country. Nice. Yeah. How long have you been here? We moved in the day quarantine started. Which um, is what, March 7th? Wanna, yeah, about three and a half years now. Uh -huh. And um, I've been in the studio for a little, for about one year now. Okay. Because we were renting this space for a while. Oh, you rented the spot first? And, yeah. And then you bought I it? Make, oh, we rented this apartment. Oh. So we bought the house rented this section oh, so it's broken up yeah to gain some income to do all the fixes that we needed to do to fix the house because it was not um not move-in ready uh -huh. <laughs> so nice yeah well congrats once again like it's uh it's like a little chunk on the mountain that you guys can grow Food yeah, or plants we, and um, herbs. we have mushrooms growing and that's going to be our main thing we grow up here because of it's kind of a north face side of the mountain. It's colder. Um, so mushrooms are going to hopefully grow really well here. We have about seven acres and there's oh. hiking all through. And so we plan on developing the trails through the land and growing some stuff, but 
overall, it's definitely not, you know, not ready to have like a farm with how steep it is. <laughs> oh yeah, you couldn't For, grow things? You could grow some things just with it being so steep, we could never like clear a place and actually have a farm spot up here. Unless you do it like Inca style. Oh, with, with the, the terraces, <laughs> right. There we go. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, you already did it with those stairs that go down. Yeah, so yeah, it's we're not, starting to... It's not impossible, I guess, lots but... Of, we know an excavator, so that helps. Yeah, but we'll it's, it'd be a lot of work. Yeah. But, like, hey, you're, gonna, you're still young. You'll be yeah, here for a long time. Yeah, we do time. plan on growing food up here. It will just be a matter of how much we'll be able to, because it's not, mm -hmm. like, it's not technical, like, farm-style yeah. land. Like, so. how bad do the winters get here? Very cold. Oh, yeah? Yeah. So have, everything dies. Yeah, we have snow probably five or six times a year, but it hits below zero a bunch up here. So if the apocalypse comes, like, you'd have to, like, you couldn't grow food in the winter. Um, this is a very dark scenario I just presented you very with. Dark. I, think what we, I think we would actually probably start some indoor uh -huh. hydroponic stuff if we went into apocalypse time. Uh -huh. The mushrooms is a main thing that we're growing in like a way of thinking like this would be a great food source uh, if we really needed to. They're so you have thought about not it. Not psychedelic mushrooms, they're out of just cooking mushrooms. <laughs> right, of course. Yeah, because once I was in Denver and I was hanging out with Randall and Anthony was performing and he stopped by and he was telling me about this spot and we started talking about like you know, what would happen apocalypse times. And I was still like deciding like, where do I live in the States? And, uh, but my mind always gets like, what if there was like a food shortage and I had to fend for myself? I need a place that has sun year round. And that's why I chose Florida. Yeah. That was one of the reasons I chose Florida. We go through the same exact thinking and it's, we go through, um, for different reasons, different areas are what you need. And there is so much water here uh, is one of the main reasons that we chose here. Um, there is natural springs all over. We drink off of a spring one exit over. Um, nice. There's a ton of water. And then also where our house happens to be, it's the weather overall is a lot cooler than other areas. So if things increase in temperature, we feel like we'll be pretty chill up here. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, but you never know, things could get really cold here. What is this imaginary <laughs> yeah. apocalypse scenario but that we dream yeah, of? Yeah, we we feel like we're getting where it will be we'll be somewhat ready, as yeah. ready as you could be. And hopefully yeah. nothing bad happens. And this is all just like imaginary parallel realities yeah. <laughs> that we don't have to entail in, in, in real life. But it's, it, it, for me, it's a little bit relaxing to know like, if that happens, I got my shit, you know. Yeah, I completely here. agree. I don't think it's something to avoid thinking about. Oh, why not? So we are what, like half an hour from Asheville? Uh, it seemed that long from how far we drove, but we're only like 15 minutes. So it's pretty much Asheville. Yeah. How yeah. long have you been in this area? I've lived here for eight years now, uh -huh. and I used to live in West Asheville, just right downtown for a while, and then uh, three years ago we moved here. Okay. Tell, I, tell me about it. It's my first time here. I love it. It's um, it's such a wonderful city there. It's really artsy, not just our particular art scene, but a lot of art scenes. There's um, a lot of just makers here crafters it is um oh just a really good vibe overall I like we were kind of touching on I'm from Colorado and I felt like the art scene was pretty intense and somewhat competitive and the vibe here has been pretty relaxed mm -hmm. in a in comparison and I wouldn't say one's better or yeah. worse it's just very different and I really enjoy the pace of life here it's more chill. Yeah. You guys are not trying to like conquer the mountain of art world. No. You're just happy to create and if yeah. you got friends that are also creating, sweet. Which I do. I have a ton of friends here that are all artists. It's 
pretty surprising how many artists I know here, but yeah, there's a ton of artists creating here. It's Tell me some names of artists that live in the area, some shout outs. Uh, Kay- Who's your homies? <laughs> Kaylee Collinson. Uh, she is from Colorado actually as well, but we've lived together. Um, we've collaborated together. We have a piece we're working on in the studio now. Um, Michael Hannock is an amazing artist. Uh, Gavin, he's the one running Secret Dreams. He yeah, lives yeah, yeah. here. Gavinger. Yep, Gavin. Gavinger, but I'm, I never know how to say his last name. Yeah, um, I'm interviewing him next. Oh, yeah, nice. Yeah. Oh, perfect. Uh, yeah, Ashley Sparrow lives here. Um, Ka lives here. Uh-huh. Um, What's she up to? I haven't heard much from her in a minute. She's still doing the thing. She's creating yeah. her headpieces and painting as well. Um and then I know she's like classic visionary painter. When it was a, a first group of thirty people, she was in there. Definitely, she's yeah, she's school. definitely one of the original. Um, if you can say that, she's definitely one of the ground floor of the visionary art scene, though, for sure. Uh huh. Um, now there's a handful more. They're all kind of like skipping my mind. There's also a huge street art scene here with a lot of artists that aren't in the visionary art scene but a lot of painters yeah yeah we we stopped into the rad district yeah the river arts district yeah and uh we got to see a couple pieces from that couple that you just mentioned gus cuddy yeah gus cuddy and I, Catherine crawford yeah very that, nice work i was like wow it. that's outstanding yeah oh, and i took a picture from my instagram and and when they talented. had their instagrams at the bottom so i followed yeah, yeah they're really talented and that also just made me think um jack henry and annie bennett and dylan indico all have a shop in the river arts district where okay. they sell their art and they have their art studios there like right where you're talking about so cool. there's some other artists that are hanging out here in the scene yeah so. i wish uh, i was staying longer so i could go in i, I went real quick real quick oh and, yeah well i just saw it's like wow this is amazing uh and and then like i've been painting a mural for a friend here yeah. uh karma and definitely wanted to catch you before going out to Secret ohio dreams yeah, Are, you're going too, right? Yep, I'm going to be working on the painting behind here. Um, this will be my second time going to Secret Dreams. And yeah, it's a really fun festival. There's more live painters than you could ever even imagine. I want to say there's 100. There's definitely over 100, maybe like 150 live painters. That's crazy. It's really a spectacle, yeah. and it's something that, specifically people like us who saw it from not being such a big deal uh-huh. or such a big thing. It was a big deal to us, but to this many painters all painting, it's pretty like shocking almost uh-huh. just what's happening at this festival. So that's cool. I like art. Yeah. I like artists. And that's why I, 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 I want to do this one. This is actually the first time I've applied to a music festival. Usually like the festivals yeah, come to me yeah. and they ask me and this one's like, well, I don't think they're going to come and ask me, so I'm gonna, I better ask Send them. Send in the application. Yeah. yeah, that's interesting how our generation never, well, applications weren't a thing. Right. And so. I'd never really. Yeah, I've never really been one to send in applications either, but I think it's because we just were at that mark where now it's just the, what everyone does. Right. Well, now there's so many. They uh, have to that, organize Like they have to somehow. choose like, okay, who's in or out yep. or who's interested in general. Like I'm okay not going to festivals. It's an exhausting situation. I'm in my forties. I don't love sleeping <laughs> on the floor in a tent with loud music and just, I'd rather just stay home and paint. Be painting, calm, yeah. And, you know? um, but this one had so many artists. It's like, okay, I need to, continue showing up mm-hmm. and saying what up to the art scene and, and, and yeah, having know. a presence. Yeah. Being of service. Mm-hmm. Um, so is this like a Papadocio festival? What's their relationship with it? Um, or they're just performers. They're just going to perform. They are playing three sets. So they do play a lot at this festival, but it's not technically like Papadocio's festival, which, um, I think someday they might actually like start doing their own festival again. They've worked with people run, like presenting festivals, but it's never actually been theirs since uh-huh. Rootwire. 
Rue Wire was. Yeah. What that about was theirs. what there was Secret Dreams and what was the other one? Resonance Festival. Resonance, yeah. Right. They've um like co-worked on a lot of fest like Secret Dreams, they've co-done it and Resonance they've co-done it with other people, but it's never been like their festival. Like uh -huh. the bands. Which yeah. the band like owned Root Wire. It was their festival. Right. At one so. point. At one point, yeah. <laughs> before before it was like robbed or something. Yeah. Like that? Yeah. Um just a lot of twenty year olds um running a really big deal that turned into a bigger deal than they realized. And um yeah, it's you don't have to get into yeah, the deep political it's, details. It's really of, just, you know, people just had different wants, and it's hard to have everyone keep moving in one direction trying to run something. It's, you know, festival world. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's up and down all over, really. No festival just, like, runs smoothly for oh, no. years and years. I so. feel bad for people who do festivals. Yeah. That sounds like a terrible job. Yeah. When <laughs> when weather can ruin your entire like life Stressful. life savings in one weekend. Yeah. I'm good on that. <laughs> right. No. Uh so thanks to the people who sacrifice who do, yeah, who months yeah. and years of their lives to create this environment and we can show up mm -hmm. and be of service also. Yeah. And I actually like even I, I am getting older, but I still really love festivals where since I was in my teens to now, it's still this place that I would be at even if I wasn't painting. Like, I truly enjoy live music and being around the community that uh -huh. um, I'm just so grateful that I have a voice at the festival and I have a job at the festival and I yeah. feel like I'm... I don't want to say needed, but it's really, it's good that I show up and have a presence there and share my art there. And I'm, yeah. I've always felt like it was home in a way, the festival scene. So, right. well, you, you seem like good at it. You're, yeah. uh, you're not elderly, <laughs> but you're becoming more of an elder yeah. as somebody yeah. getting closer to their forties. Mm -hmm. I don't want to expose your age, but yeah. like, you know, <laughs> get it, get this, close. this is how beautiful you can look, you know, <laughs> um, and to show up and be like, yeah, being around the block for over a decade mm -hmm. and, you know, and share your vibes mm -hmm. with the younger generation. And of course, your beautiful art, which is very unique. You know, you, you got your own flavor. Thanks. So that's like appreciated. Yeah, that's important these days. <laughs> yeah. So I'm excited for Secret Dreams. I've uh, never been to that dinosaur park. Yeah, it's yeah. it's wild. Ohio's a wild place. I love Ohio. I, I every time I go there, like people are lovely. It's beautiful too. Yeah. There's if you have a chance, there is a lot of places to hike there. I don't know mm -hmm. if you. If There's you that Serpent Mountain in Ohio. Yeah, the Serpent Mound. I wonder how far away it is from the Dinosaur Park. Um, I want to say it is less than an hour. <gasps> Yeah. Whoa. I want to say it's... Paulina, we should uh, go. You definitely should. That's some like, ancient aliens, like, you know, 10,000 years old kind of yeah. ruins, right? Yeah. yeah. It is, and it's really Grand Hancock talks about it. And, as like, yeah, in his recent... It's like nice. the last episode. Something weird. I forget what happened. Something weird. They, like, don't want people filming there, and they, like, don't want to share the real story about what it's about. And Graham is like... I will share this story. <laughs> like he like sneaks all around and is like he is doing what it takes to try to get it out there what it's about. It's so. in his latest uh Netflix mm -hmm, which show, is really good. Uh which is called Ancient Apocalypse. Yes, they, yeah. <laughs> I was like oh, I'm not going to be able to think of this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And also what do you think of that uh toxic chemical spill that happened in, in Ohio. Do you think that's still in the air? I am sure it is because none of this stuff breaks down. Because that was in, what, February? Yeah, right? and I, you know, I don't know if it was in February. It's mostly, like, I don't know if you can go anywhere in the country anymore without being exposed to chemicals anymore. Like, even just what they're spraying on the sidewalk to kill the weeds, it's... But that one was a big one. That was like a bomb devastatingly of awful, which I actually had me. I don't know what how bad it's going to be up there. I would not be drinking water from 
groundwater. I would bring bring in your own water, probably. Right, totally. Uh, I was going to do another festival in Ohio in June. I usually do Pyro Fest, but then like oh. Cosm opened, so I was like, I gotta do Cosm. Like I've waited yeah, 10 years. Yeah, that was so exciting. Right. I was uh, like, yeah, vicariously living through everyone there. I was like, oh my gosh, it's finally open. You, you could have showed up. I guess you're busy doing your thing. Yeah, the it, my current. 20, 20 month old boy has me staying home a lot these days. Gotcha. <laughs> gotcha. But I was also like, oh, I don't know if I want to go to Ohio right now. Not that I'm a scaredy cat, but it's like, if a train just spilled all these toxins and it's mm. in the air, even if we don't see it, should I put myself into that situation? Yeah. I don't know if it dissipated. It's not even been a year. So and we'll I'm never based. know the effects for a long time either probably so yeah. it's really hard to say I've been you know you try to like go through life having the least amount of exposure to negative chemicals and all the toxins and everything I just don't know how avoidable it is yeah like I know it yeah it's probably concentrated up there right now I also think being there for a few days is different than Living there. Going up there, you know, and I know mm. a lot of people who live there and it's heartbreaking really just what. Yeah, yeah they ruin a beautiful ecosystem. Such a be yeah, beautiful area, good people. Right. Yeah, honestly. And then the government, they didn't even really do much. No. Like they're like, oh shit, like we got but these shitty do, regulations. When do they do much? <laughs> well, they say they care about the environment when it's all about taking away our rights. Yeah. Like, oh yeah, we, we're going to put you in a 15 minute city because we care about the environment so much. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Can't really trust the government. I don't think care and government go <laughs> together. <laughs> yeah. Um, so let's go back to, to, to festival talk. Uh, okay. so Root Wire was, uh, a Papadocio festival. That's where we yeah. met. Yeah. Do you have some, uh, what, what year did you yeah. do it? 2012 or for? I did it from the very start. Okay. That's where we met. Yeah. And I went, we met so many friends there. Yeah. That's when 2012 is when everyone met. Mm -hmm. I was going since 2010. Um, it was, How was it before? It was so special yeah? and just so magical. There was about a thousand people there the first year. Um, I was the only person painting Whoa. in that whole field. You're the OG, yeah. The first person to paint in the field, yeah. People were like, That's what's this claim. woman doing? My, it was. People <laughs> were like, what are you doing? And, you know, some of the sound guys in the sound booth were like, yeah, let's get her a cord. Let's light her up out here. And uh -huh. it was really exciting. They were like, People are like going around all the yeah, yeah. She's it, painting yeah, it was by almost, herself? What is and this then, going like, on? The next night, Michael Garfield came and joined me and was next to me. And then like the third night, more people were out in the field. Following year, we were all in the field. 2012, they had us on the risers and it was uh -huh. such a spectacle. But yeah, the first two years were really special. I want to say there's only 10 artists there visual artists, but they still had a really nice gallery. And um, it was... Who was the, the, the gallery curator uh, for Rootwire? Who it by, you mean? Like, who put the gallery together? I Papa Docio did the first years, and then eventually Vision Lab in 2012 helped run it. But oh, right. Papa Docio always has supported the arts, and they were very much like, no, we're going to out of our own pocket, get the tent and get this gallery set up with volunteers to help do the walls. But it was never um, outsourced at this time. It was like the band being like, nope, we'll take it out of all the, all the costs out of our pocket to make this happen. So it was really, wow. they kind of went out on a limb to really start something special that I think we've all seen how it's grown like having galleries at festivals and live painting and it was that was special at least uh i only came in in 2012 and did you uh, go the next year too yeah yeah and then after that the next one was gratify that they told me like this one's kind of like root yeah wire. which was actually a lot of our friends uh, -huh. uh anthony and i's friends through that festival we know okay. the people who threw that the one year it happened uh -huh. and, it was... and that was north carolina or south carolina yeah um I remember being humid. <laughs> I think it was in South Carolina. Yeah. I didn't go to that one, actually. Okay. Yeah. I was still in Colorado, but I always made it a point to make it to Rootwire because there was something 
I didn't know at the time, but there was obviously something really special happening there that was pulling me in each year. Mm -hmm. And now looking back, we realize why. That's where we met all of right. our friends, and it's where we all really started in totally. a way. So so for those who don't know, uh, this festival scene we're part of, Papadocio, is a jam band, mm -hmm. correct? Yeah. And they're very popular, and they got a large following to the point that they can make a festival. And for some reason that you will explain to me right now, they care about the arts, mm -hmm. and they created a festival that highlighted the visual artists as much as the musicians, mm -hmm. which was not something that was happening yeah. uh, before, not not much happening before yeah, that. Like exactly. the, the arts always kind of like, secondary. This, this little secondary thing on the side, not put as an equal. Yeah, and I think what coincided that with that was live painting became a thing, because it wasn't really even a thing you know, at festivals until starting around 2009, 10 is when you really start seeing painters. And I think Papadocio just really valued the visual side of the music scene. And if you imagined a festival and you took all the art and the visual side out of it, it would be pretty bland. And I think they really noticed that at the start. And they really are the type of people that, like, as a whole, they want to pull creators up with them so mm. any other band they're going to give a good opportunity to and try to give them a good set opening up for this band or another artist they're going to try to like use their art for their posters or have them at their festivals or shows they like they want to include creators in their process as well mm. which nice worked really well for them too because yeah. kind of like a visual scene has emerged um alongside them in a right. way they would never claim it as something they started though they're like oh we just made a container for y'all to find each other and start your creation they thing. wouldn't go out there being like we created never. the life painter scene never that would be too egotistical no and they even though they were involved yeah they were involved but they really didn't it was us lugging our stuff out there and really creating something new that hadn't been done before And it took us knowing that it was something special and worthwhile to do all the work, to get our easel out to the middle of a field mm -hmm. to paint and have, you know, crazy conversations and rain and just uh -huh. crazy stuff happening. But we were like, no, this is really special. We knew right. what we were doing was, you know, not going anywhere. It was like worthwhile. Right. Like live painting has stayed around and become so big for a reason. Because mm -hmm. it's, it's so special and continuously amazing. Continuously growing mm -hmm. to the point of now we're about to go to a festival <laughs> and like a hundred of them. Like at the time that I went to Rootwire, I was already uh, part of this. Uh, it wasn't even like life painters. I had to get into life painting. I was just a visionary mm -hmm. artist. Well, I was more like a skateboard street artist mm -hmm. that had a visionary flavor. So I got kind of like pulled into mm -hmm. the visionary world. And um, and there was this established group, and Rootwire only really had like a couple of them, like Amanda mm -hmm. Sage and Roman Viagrana, mm -hmm. and even Randall. Even though he's a little bit older, he was kind of like new to the scene, yeah. uh, but I knew them, and I didn't know anybody else. Mm -hmm. I was like, whoa! But this whole gallery of visionary artists that I don't know of that now are all established, You're good friends and, too, yeah, <laughs> and old school. So it was like a big introduction to like a whole new generation mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. of visionary artists that were out there, but they hadn't really put us together. Yeah, I mean, I feel that too. Or like, had Root Wire not happened, I wonder if I would even know all these visionary artists. But it really was how we all met, like. Uh -huh. So How who, many times have you said that to someone? Right. I think like every, almost every <laughs> second, uh, you know, interview I do is like, like we other, met at Rootwire. Yeah, we met at Rootwire. Every other podcast, um, I met Morgan and Randall at Rootwire. Uh, I met Emily Kell. Like Emily all Kell. some of my very, very best friends now are all yeah. just, we met in Ohio. Right. Mr. Melty. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Della. And Mr. Melty was actually there from 2010, from the very start, okay. where um, Josh Otis, uh, Della, Andrew Wagner, Christian Jacksheimer. Right. Um, oh, there's just so many. 
Crystal was there, but I Crystal, had met Crystal before yeah. in Hawaii. Um, Michael Garfield, mm -hmm. uh, etc. Like I'm, I'm gonna forget some names, but like it, it was. We really felt looking back, it felt like everyone was there. Uh -huh. I'm happy <laughs> I made it. My my wife at the time didn't want me to go. Uh, oh, crazy! <laughs> I I flew from Belgium. Uh, to Ohio. Wow. Be I was in Belgium. My wife had, had a terrible year for her health. I, I think that was the year. Yeah, 2012 was the year she had cancer in her throat. Oh, God. And they had to take this nodule out, mm -hmm. and she was recuperating. I actually, after that, I took her to Italy to do the, the Mish Technique oh. uh, retreat. Oh, that's nice. So she could have like a nice place to heal yeah, up. Yeah, to recoup. And, uh, but she was still kind of weak and we went back to Belgium and then Rootwire was coming up. It's like, I really want to do this festival in Ohio. And she's like, don't go to the States right now. Be here, be the good husband. And it's like, I kind of feel like I, I gotta go to this go. one. Like there's like this, there's this new thing coming up and like the visionary art scene is just getting momentum and I gotta keep on mm -hmm. showing up in person, like online doesn't cut it. Mm -hmm. And I'm happy I did it and now I'm divorced. <laughs> <laughs> and, I didn't know where that was going. I was like, oh. <laughs> no, my 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 ex-wife totally understands. Yeah, uh, and now looking back, it probably was the right decision when we're still talking about Rootwire as the founding time of our... Yeah, like, I, I felt like I wasn't, like, old school, you know, like, mm -hmm. everything was new school by then, but, like, I'd had it a couple years of yeah. doing it and me showing up, and mm -hmm. I think I was the only one spray painting a mural. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's where I started, actually, life painting, spray painting murals, because I was like, I'm very slow with, with brush them, painting, yeah. so just give me some cans. I'll do you something huge and quick. This yeah. will be a better thing. And they're like, okay, let's build you a wall In on stage. Yeah. I probably was fuming up every eye, including the band, which I wouldn't do these days. I know. Everything was so much more renegade uh -huh. because it was all new. Yeah. It, or, you know, that was the first time probably someone was spray painting between the two stages. Right. Like that. So, But we were trying new things. Mm -hmm. Now we know, like, no, don't put a giant wall right next to the band. Yeah, I can't. Because uh, <laughs> once I had this rapper, Immortal Technique, get so mad at me because my, my wall was too close to the stage oh, and, and the fumes, fumes were getting were... him. And he's like, I can't remember fuck? my lyrics. <laughs> right. No, like, this something smells really bad right now. Who's smoking that bad ganja? Come on, people, be organic. And I'm just like, oh, Immortal Technique hates me. It's me. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I'm happy I did it. And my wife totally, uh, my ex-wife totally understood. We're still friends. And she's like, dude, like, you got your thing that to happens. do. Follow yeah. your path. You're not, you're not meant to be my nurse just yeah. because I'm sick. Now she's got a boyfriend that takes care of her. So. Oh, perfect. Yeah, so everything works out. And I'm on I the like road. I like that. That's perfect. Yeah, I know. Everything is just the way it, be, it, it is. So you got good memories of that festival. Definitely. That's still, to this day, I think, the most special time for a lot of us just because it was so new and exciting and we really were doing something new and special and right it was really powerful and potent right as, as we were saying before on the right here uh relating to for example uh, moving into denver or moving into st pete it's nicer to move into something that hasn't been developed yet and you can like be part of that development the ground floor yeah right exactly and that's how it really did feel at rewire it uh -huh. was yeah and uh after that you've done many festivals but one that i think you've been a staple of is electric forest yeah yeah electric forest i started going in 2015 and uh it has been one of the most fun festivals i've done as far as like that what we do there um i used to work with a team called dial in which is crystallize randall roberts and morgan mandala and we would Put up a big nine foot canvas we build this earth altar around it and paint for four days straight and see what happened and it was um one of the times that we really had felt like we had a stage there was bleachers around us we really people could sit and watch and really like watch the performance uh-huh yeah it was lovely 
Yeah. It was very like temple like. Yeah, we very tried to in the middle of the actual electrical. That forest. was exactly what we were trying to do. Like in the chaos, all of a sudden you come across this serene, living, green, breathing green moss. Just this really like magical little fairyland in the middle of the chaos. Uh -huh. Even a place for people to come who maybe needed that. But they at the same time, it was probably like quite disconcerting to be in that like river yeah. of people and wooks and yeah. drugs oh my and gosh craziness. yeah like saturday night by 2 a.m like you know <laughs> you're, you're like, you're like you're, i'm gonna go hide <laughs> like, yeah this is intense yeah it's so intense it's like and little creatures and critters coming out i know you just, that's so exactly it you, you just nailed it it really is all of a sudden someone like pops up and they're like melissa and, and you got your flashlight right? yeah. they have a headlamp on and they're like are looking at it. yeah um if i didn't love the festival life like i do i think it would have eventually wore me down working in that spot with the chaos around it but I like truly find humor in that person that's like, whoa, like uh -huh. the weirdos and all the like weird stuff that happens. I like really still find humor in it. So uh -huh. it's like, I enjoy the zoo yeah. in a way of like electric forest. It's that's how we feel is that we're animals in a little pen uh -huh. being watched. <laughs> nice. Well, the uh, dial-in collaborations are always super beautiful. Thank to have you. Four different talented artists yeah. combine efforts. It's always like a beautiful thing. Yeah, that's, um, it's interesting. I would say something without live painting, I don't know if collaborating would have come into my life the way it did had we not all been live painting. So I feel like live painting opened that doorway into collaboration, which... I thought live painting was the greatest thing in the world. And then I, you know, found out what it's like to paint with your best friends and create a piece together. I was like, no, this is the greatest thing. Uh -huh. And then eventually to keep making art together and keep developing those pieces and having them progress was even more amazing. So like overall, even though dial in and we're on a hiatus, I would never think of it as a sad thing. It's still the very best memories of my entire art career have been painting with those three artists and making mm. those pieces and some of the work I'm most proud of too. Like nice. the visual art that came out of it is something we're all really proud of. Nice. Well, yeah. shout outs to Crystallize, yeah. Morgan Mandela, Randall Roberts. Do you feel you guys, the band will get back together at some point? Or is I this think, uh, unknown like the Beatles? When it really comes down to it, I don't, I can't speak for everyone. I don't think any of us could ever say that we wouldn't ever paint together because it really, um, there was not, it wasn't like we were trying it was this effortless thing that happened where our styles effortlessly went together where we could never deny that. Like, that's the truth. Our styles flow together perfectly. So that might happen again someday just out of, like, um, respect for what we're able to do together. It really is, like, not to toot my own horn, some of the best art I've ever been a part of. Mm -hmm. So it's like I, I could never say no to that. Right. I don't think I've had that myself. Like not not a crew. I've done collabs, and yeah. usually it's like you do your thing, and then you give me the canvas, and I yeah. do my thing. And but I've done not that like too. four people at the same time yeah, just which, jamming, and it looks hella fun. And it well, you even said that when you come up to us at Electric Forest, you're like, you guys like are having fun, and it's like, yeah, we are. We're like best friends painting together. How cool is this? Uh huh. <laughs> Um, it's definitely like the fact that that even happened, I just feel so fortunate because it really was the most fun I've ever had painting. And it really was amazing what we did in the moment where, yeah, I've done the hand back and forth collabs, but to have it all come together that way without, we didn't talk either. Uh -huh. So there was no, we didn't plan. We were legitimately just non-verbally having it all come together which was 
pretty like powerful. Mm-hmm. Well, thanks for sharing about uh, that collaborative uh, project you had. Uh, something I did want to say was. Fortunately, as beautiful as Darling was in the collaboration of four potent artists creating something really special, I feel that all four of you stand as very strong individual artists and you don't need that side project. Like without Darling, it's not like, oh, now it's just sweet Sweetmelays. Yeah. It's like, that's not as great. No, you're as great on your own and all the other free artists are also as great on their own. Thank you. Um, I don't know if I could say that of other uh, groupings of people. I don't want to insult anybody, but when I think of, for example, um, uh, Apex or something, or even uh, Further, it's almost like it's like bigger than the individuals. Yeah. Uh, you know, and not that the individuals are small, like they're, they're great too, but that's like... But the collab it's, it's, really It's overtaken, took, yeah. mm-hmm. you know. Thank you. I'm happy to hear that you think we all stand really like solidly yeah. on our own. And I think if anything, it's a gift that you guys can now just like fly with your own wings yeah. and break, go back to like your unique crystal mm-hmm. you had to offer. And I actually am really happy now to have more p- time to work on just my own paintings because I was de- devoting a lot of time into like we work on them live, but finish them at a house for hours and hours and hours. So it is nice to have those hours back to myself and back to my own work. Mm -hmm. And it was great that you guys finished off the project or at least, uh, you know, let it go into the hiatus with that big show in Denver. Yeah, we had just such a successful show and it was really like I, we, you know, we'd like go downstairs and all like get teary together and then walk back upstairs like, oh, Uh. we knew this was going to be this successful. And it was just... um, really like a way to celebrate such a magical thing that happened between the four of us. Uh-huh. It was like a perfect way. Like it was like a party at the end of it all to like celebrate what just happened. Yeah. So. Well, I'm happy I was there. Yeah. yeah was- it was really great to see you. And we had so many people show up and it was really just um, special to see all the pieces in one place, all those huge pieces on a wall when they're nine feet we don't even see them at our houses hanging so it's Uh like we got to see all of them in a place and we had a nice gallery it's a beautiful gallery and then we had our individual work hanging as well which was really fun to have that aspect and uh, I just feel really blessed to have had that opportunity to collaborate with such powerfully like they're just some of the most talented powerful visionary artists I've ever known so the fact that I was working with them and what we did it's just all nothing but gratefulness Uh totally well congrats on that yeah Um, thank you so let's go to your roots okay where did you start uh tell me about your art like there's a lot of things I want to ask about your art uh, from subject matter to technique uh you know, to what you're trying to say, but like, where did you start creating? I was born and raised in Steamboat, Colorado, and didn't realize it at the time that it was one of the most beautiful places in the country, because I was just a kid. I didn't know, but I was soaking in nature every day. Um, All my art is nature inspired, and I didn't fully put it together, but I was just painting what I liked, but it was painting the beautiful nature I grew up in. And um, yeah, I never specifically was like going for the visionary art scene. I was just making whatever I felt was beautiful. Um, I was really inspired by nature. And then on the other side of it, really inspired by a lot of the like snowboarding brand art and all the logos and I really wanted to design snowboards, and I was like, really. You're a snowboarder? I ski and snowboard. I I can't decide what I claim. (laughs) (laughs) I spent about 20 years skiing and 10 years snowboarding. So okay, um, which one came first? Skiing for 10 years, snowboarding for 10 years, skiing for 10 years. Hmm, Interesting. Why do you go back to skis after snowboarding? Powder. I just like I just like riding powder on skis, and it's. Like, Snowboarding's no good for that? It is. I just, 
If I got to choose on a powder day, do I want to be on skis or on a snowboard? I want to be on skis. Huh. And part of it is just getting around easier. You know, you're not unbuckling. Okay. Let me get over on this cat track to, you know. But not experienced enough to know the difference. Yeah. I, I mean, a bunch of times. I definitely reached a level of being able to do anything on a snowboard. Well, not any, not like 360s, but yeah. like. <laughs> 180s. I mean, one, yeah, 180s. And it was still like the overall flow I felt more with skiing. Okay. So I like went back to skiing. Can you do that, please? Mm. <laughs> like overall what's interesting is compared to a lot of people I'm really good at skiing and snowboarding but I was raised in steamboat which is where all the Olympians come from okay where like I was not good when I was in high school even though compared to like most of the country I can really hold my own on uh -huh. but like I'm like oh I'm not very good but because it was compared like, to like Olympians, yeah, I'm not that great. <laughs> I, 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 I can relate to you because, like, growing up in Peru, I sucked at soccer because everybody plays That's soccer a, in Peru, so everybody is good. The and perfect I sucked example. At it. But then when I moved to Canada, I was good enough to be the captain of the soccer yeah. team. That's uh, a perfect example. Right. <laughs> yeah, you're like, oh, I am good. Yeah. Yeah, so, so. But, anyways, you're talking about your art yeah, and so, uh, influence of snowboarding yeah. and skiing. And, and then that kind of started to get influenced a lot by the music scene. I like really started listening to The Grateful Dead when I was like 15 and really enjoyed concert posters. Are you and, a deadhead? I mean, not as much anymore. I don't choose it on my computer when I'm working or something, but I still appreciate it and I see it as like the founding, like the founding fathers of our scene is uh -huh. the dead. And like, I fully appreciate it for what it is. Uh -huh. um, but at 15, I was really into it. Um, really into Art Nouveau when that got meshed into the 60s rock posters. Uh -huh. So when the 60s poster artists started being inspired by Art Nouveau, uh -huh. some of those pieces are extremely potent to me of like, I was like, that's what I'm going for. Retro, colorful Art Nouveau. Great composition. Yeah. Composition is Which so is important. a big element of your art. Composition it, Your art is most, not mostly, but like, your art is shapes and how you're putting the shapes and then you... Mm -hmm. You know, dial exactly. the shape into something beautiful, but your composition is instrument. That is, it's the bones. It's the most, to me, it's the most important thing. Um, and I really feel like I have a natural eye for it, where it's something that I really, whether I can tell if it's on, I can tell if it's off. If the composition is off, I see it. And I'm just mm. like, oh, that's, that's off. You know, I just... So, yeah, composition was really, really important to me. Um, and it was really natural, like, that composition just came about in my work as an important aspect. But, so, yeah. A lot of artists don't really, I'm not saying, like, artists don't value composition, but it's almost like a secondary thing. It's, but it's so important. Oh, it's so important. Even, like, It's this, what you first see when you see a painting from oh, far away. Oh, it matters. It's... It matters so much where I've even considered maybe that would be something I would teach as a workshop is just the basics of composition and not even necessarily go into all of the techniques of this brush with this and this yeah. paint, and, but just base level of rule of thirds, you know, stuff going off the edge. Where is it hitting? Should you crop that different? You know, like. Do you think it's an instinctual thing? Because when I think of a composition, I don't even. When I teach it in my work, it's like, think about your composition. Make sure there's enough negative space between this shape mm -hmm. and this shape. And how are we talking? And where is the mm -hmm. energy moving? How is the eye following this composition? Blah, blah, blah. But I, I also don't know what's a proper rule. Do you think it's like an instinct? Or is I there like a both. mathematics? It's both. There's definitely rules. Like you could go like one and write out like a list of rules. Okay. So there is rules to composition. There's always a time that you break the rules. So there's always instinct coming through of, oh, this is a time that I'm breaking the rules on this composition rule because I'm using this composition rule. And mm -hmm. um, the rules are real though, and they wouldn't have ever been able to even be repeated as like things to do if they weren't proven. Like 
The rule of thirds wouldn't have made it all these years if it wasn't real. What is the rule of thirds? Uh, just an interesting composition. Uh, a lot of times you want to have a, your focal point hit in a place of thirds. So What do you mean by that? Like if you break the canvas into three, the uh -huh. two spots where it was broken are where you'd want to hit with right. your subject matter. Okay. Um, I don't know. If Is that, it like a I Fibonacci would... kind of like golden mean? Yeah. Locked into that? Yeah. And the Fibonacci spiral actually, if you did the math, it hits the points of thirds. Mm. I wish I had like a whiteboard right now and I yeah. could be doing the whole. Do you have one of those compasses that measure the, so, the golden mean? I don't. I know what you're talking about. Um, I don't ever cousin. go into it to that extent because I feel like my eye already grabs it mm. and not to like toot my own horn again but like that is probably one of my high like one thing I'm strengths. best at is yeah. composition where I'd feel comfortable teaching it out of I know it so well uh -huh. I have my degree in graphic design oh, cool. which is very composition based right. where I feel like a lot of my skill was really developed with getting that degree uh -huh. So I really, I've learned a lot about composition and from a young age, it's just been an internal thing that I knew. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, anyways, I took you on a little branch of composition because yeah. like not a lot of people talk about it. So as somebody who's so strong in it, I want to teach yeah. you a little bit more about it. I've been thinking it. of if I were to ever even start some sort of YouTube channel or something, it'd be Composition Corner. Uh -huh. And I have, like, each day we learn a new rule of composition, and there's just so many little things you can do to tweak your work to yeah. be really interesting right. that's not even technique-based. Right. Well, I, I would tune into that because uh, <laughs> I know how to paint. Yeah. I, I know how to do my thing, but if I was to create a, a, a different kind of skeleton than my usual skeleton, I could, you know, like the mm -hmm. flower could like branch into so many different yeah. expressions. If you started exploring composition, you never know which way you might take it because you might find a rule that particularly works with your art and you take, you know, mm -hmm. go off in that direction with it. I could imagine uh, doing the dial-in collabs was almost getting you out of your comfortable uh, yeah. compositional zone. It was actually just so much fun because I would be looking at the painting and I'd be like, oh, nope, we need something right there. And I'd go up and just slap yeah. in a big circle right where that spot was, where uh -huh. it was almost, if anything, like exercise for composition oh, okay. was collabing. Because it looks not like a mess, but it's an explosion oh, of randomness. Oh, it's a huge mess. It's the best part is like within the mess is when you find the keys and you're like, oh, that's where the rule of thirds is. Oh, let's, let's, let's hold on to that bubble. Uh -huh. That's staying. That yeah. is grounding. Did you ever have to fight your way to get a, a general composition uh, through? Or no, did people I would respect itself? I think um, we all respected each other's um, view. But I also feel like my view on composition was really respected within the group. And uh -huh. I feel like if I said something like, this is off, yeah. everyone really believed me. Right. And no one was like, I think it's right. If yeah. I, you know, I think there was a base level respect of. Yeah, this is what she's good at. Let's yeah, like, yeah, you know, let's let yeah. uh, Melissa do Say her Say this is cool or not. <laughs> like, so yeah. back to your roots, you were saying that you trained and got a degree in yeah. graphic design? Yeah. Where? I went to school in Fort Collins at CSU, um, which is actually where Morgan went to school. Okay, and cool. we didn't know each other, but we like passed each other's art all the time like walking by it and stuff. were you there at the same time yeah okay interesting it's crazy yeah thanks um so i got my degree there which i'm just really thankful for i know a lot of people don't use their degree and i feel like i really did use my degree a lot because a graphic design degree when you're a product creator uh -huh. like i was creating products with my art so it was really like a good thing to be able to like put my logo on it and mm. label everything and brand it all and it was really like coincided really well as a degree for what I was doing. It's a it's a good degree to have. Yeah, I, I did like illustration and design painting. myself. So, oh, oh, yeah. Not, yeah. Then you like. So, so I did fine arts first, and I was like, 
what, am I going to be an artist now and sell paintings on the street? Yeah. And my teacher is like, you got a good illustration eye. Do illustration yeah. and design. So that includes graphic design, but it was all like, okay, how do we turn your art into commercial art mm -hmm. that actually gives you money? Because I was Which like... Which is really important. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, don't get a painting degree. <laughs> Or I think also, what I think it, no, it I think you could go other. to workshops for painting mm -hmm. that costs a lot less and you learn a lot more than getting your degree in school for painting. Well, the states you gotta be careful what you learn because it costs so much money. I know. I I know. I'm very fortunate. My parents supported me going to school, and that was like this thing that I feel still to this day. I just count it as such a blessing that I didn't go into the world with student debt and I'm just so thankful I actually I had parents who were extremely supportive in the way of like from day one they're like you can be an artist if you want to do it you uh -huh. can do it nice. and I was like oh they're like you got to work hard but you can do anything you want with your life uh -huh. and I was like oh okay uh -huh. that's and, awesome yeah I went into the world truly believing that's unusual it's very unusual and I've learned that the older I get that not everyone had that, like my parents truly did say, you can be an artist if you work hard. And I was like, okay, so I'll do that. Right. How many years did you do? Uh, that's university. Uh, five years. I was wow. in, yeah. That seems like expensive for United States. Yeah. Well, I mean, I was in in-state tuition because I was from Colorado. So it was like considerably less. And I think it was, considerably less than it is right now to go to school like uh, that was 10 years ago uh-huh crazy um, <laughs> yeah great well, I'm happy you pulled yeah. it off um, and so after I graduated was when I really decided I was like I gotta figure out a way to be an artist like whatever yeah. it takes to not have a regular job is what I gotta do you didn't want to do graphic design well I actually I was offered a job with Burton Oh. That's the snowboarding company I've been wanting to work with forever. That's amazing. I turned it down because I found out all the projects for the first, like, 10 years of my life would be, like, working with a group of 10 people to make this one little logo or something. I was like, I can't do that. I need to be, like, way more creative than yeah. that. That's, um, that's the bigger leagues of graphic design. Yeah. I had a friend. Oh, yeah, it would have been a financially a good job. And you get to do art but I, I had a friend i understand you because i had a friend who worked on a album cover for metallica uh on, on yeah. magnetic i think it was and he, and i was like oh my god Coolest you did ever. a metallica album cover he's like dude it was terrible yeah. we're like a team of 20 and every little fucking thing is this yeah. big fucking exactly. deal and it sucked and i never want to think i was like oh and wow. you're like in a office not in a studio you're not like right. making art you're talking about art with people. Because it's so <laughs> yeah. big. Yeah, you know, I so just, like, couldn't see myself doing that. Um, actually, I was like, oh, let me try to do my own thing, and if not, I'll reach out to them and try to get that job opportunity. Mm -hmm. So I had that in my back pocket. As, it, like, it'd be better to just be a fine artist that goes up to Bird and's like, hey, you want to use my art for your snowboards? And let the graphic design team yes, lay it out as definitely. they please. And that's where I was at of like, I didn't, I had my degree in graphic design. Did I love graphic design? No. Uh -huh. Like I was like, I don't actually want to be the person making, laying it all out and do I want to just make the art right. for it. So. Did you ever go... Uh, once you had your momentum with your art, did you go back to snowboard companies and try to pitch it for some licensing? I actually designed skis and snowboard for Papadocio. And okay. then... Um, they got their own skis and snowboards? Yeah. Okay. They're hanging in there. Okay, nice. Um, and then uh, that company reached out to me, and I think well, I'll do some stuff with them. But I also... What's the name of the company? Um, Gilson. Okay. I also feel like I could send out art right now to, like... 80 ski companies and a few are going to pick it up, which is right. interesting. Now you realize like, oh, I just needed to make the art and then I have the power of what I do with it where before had you been making art for other people yeah. and you're out, you lose your power in a way. Well, I did that with skateboarding. 
because I was a skateboarder. Yeah. But I'm not a snowboarder skier, so I've never really gone and tried to hunt down mm-hmm. some snowboard. Like, I guess I could make some money, but, like, it feels less authentic as somebody who hasn't snowboarded Yeah, a I definitely wouldn't be, like, doing that if I wasn't. Uh, or I'm sure you feel, like, very comfortable doing skates. Skateboards, because yeah. yeah, that's how I feel. I'm like, oh, Unless I've Unless if ridden. the company comes to you, you're not gonna be like, no, I don't skate. I can't yeah. skate. You'd be like, sure. But you're not gonna be like seeking out. Right. Yeah, I would feel pretty like I've earned my, like seeking out of snowboard and ski companies out of I've I've skied the runs. <laughs> like, uh-huh. yeah. Yeah, totally. Well, I hope you. Hey, I hope you still get a, a yeah. Burlington graphic. That that's and, like the biggest brand, right? Yeah. Um. Yeah. Definitely. They're. And I still could see myself seeking that out when I was saying I have more time to do some of my own stuff now, not collabing as much. That type of stuff is like on the like more on the front burner now. I'm like, oh, I can really like shop my own art right, right. now. And I think your art would do very well for snowboards, not only because it's beautiful, but I imagine snowboarders and skiers are kind of like surfers where they appreciate nature and natural earth tones and stuff definitely yeah i definitely you know i also like i truly was inspired by the art of ski and snowboard so i feel like it would naturally like go on it too right i've always just it was really cool like in the 90s snowboarding yeah (laughs) it's super rad it was so rad i love like everything about it just yeah all the boards are so amazing the colors just everything the neons Right. It was like, yeah. Yeah, I like it Heady a lot. Heady times. <laughs> yeah. I haven't done snowboarding. And I, when, when I've done it, I've enjoyed it. But it's just like so complicated and expensive that I'm just like, I'm just going to go and skate my friend's mini round. I, I would try skiing before going into snow. Unless you're like going to live at a ski resort and snowboard every day, you should just be skiing if it's just for vacation. Just seems more natural for me to go down a, on a yeah. surfboard board situation than going straight forward on things that could well, split you, open you'll and, have you'd have to try it because uh, you're you're already going straight forward with things that split open your legs and you I don't no, know i'm just saying it's like it is very it seems unnatural but it's i'm like just walking. imagining myself tearing my growing right now <laughs> uh, but let's go back to go back to your art roots so uh, you 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 finish uh college yeah. you had graphic designer powers where did you seek out to be a fine artist i was just like i gotta find a way to make monthly income to pay this rent anything to avoid getting a job so i had been out at the same time going to a concert i go to con went to concerts Every weekend, if not in the middle of the week, too. And this is in Colorado still, right? Yeah, and I was like, wait a second. I can make a piece of art for the concert and stand outside and sell it mm-hmm. and make money. And so I started doing that. And what I started making, I think I was 20. Okay. And I started, or 21, I started making lot posters. And Red Rocks was pretty much in my backyard. I was in Fort Collins. It was an hour away. Um, and every single weekend or on Monday, I would start making the poster, crush, 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 hardly sleep, make this poster, go and print it on Thursday, make it to Red Rocks the next day for the three nights of shows, uh-huh. and then start again on Monday. So it was like a <laughs> not official thing. It was like an no, illegal. No, not like, official, uh-huh. totally illegal, totally just so renegade. Um, it was to- it was where I got like a backbone. Uh-huh. Like I have always been kind of a soft spoken person, and I like learned to like bust out art, go in front of a bunch of strangers, and be like, buy this, buy this. Like, and I was like so hungry to make it as an artist. I was like, oh, I really am. I'm gonna go talk to strangers. I'm willing to do anything. Uh-huh. Like I'll do whatever it takes. You were fucking Anything passionate about but getting, getting your art a regular going. job so yeah. I was just and um it really I grew a backbone from thousands and thousands of face-to-face interactions with people selling them these posters what and kind of bands uh or shows did you do posters for kind of started with sound tribe but um the string cheese incident widespread panic sound tribe railroad earth any festival I went to, Root Wire, Wakarusa, 
Electric Forest, Rothbury. Um, the list, I've probably made like 60 some posters over the time and they're all hand done watercolor and fabric it was uh -huh. this like collage process and um, probably have like, you know, maybe 20,000 posters out in the world from doing it. And it was it's really like um, a powerful time in my life out of I really did like I was like, I'm willing to do whatever it takes. I'm willing to be in uncomfortable situations to do this. I'm willing to like, you know, run from the cops up in, or I'm willing to be like in the rain trying to keep my poster dry. Like uh -huh. I'm willing to like yell across the lot like, hey, come buy these. Like I realized like I was willing to do whatever it took. Then, you know, years of paying my dues, I start getting asked to design official posters. And it's just like I wouldn't trade any of those original days for any anything, though, because it was right. so, like, um, really just I, like, proved to myself that I would do what it took. Yeah, well, to, this is exciting. Yeah. <laughs> I, I love it. It's so weird because on, on this podcast show, every guest I talk to seems to have started with some illegal activity. <laughs> uh, like, you know, when I was talking with uh, Karma yesterday, doing his glass art was illegal because weed was illegal. Yeah. And then oh, you, yeah. And then you got street artists who started with graffiti and skateboarders. You're not allowed to skateboard yep. there, and that's illegal. Yeah. So it's like, it's why like if, your heart, if your heart's not racing, is it worth it? Like, right, <laughs> but it's exciting that you were like, I was doing event posters, and that was illegal. Yeah, it was, it, like, was, it, was so, it was so fun. It was, I traveled the country off of posters. I went, I would like go on fish tour and hit, all the shows with the posters and just it was really fun and I really learned a lot about selling art because you're having like in person just human human interaction over 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 I like know what prices throw people off I know what verbiage to use I know what verbiage not to use it's like uh -huh. it was like boot camp for selling art pretty much <laughs> or just training yourself to be a charismatic people mm -hmm. person that can relate and communicate past the visual yeah, art. Yeah, exactly. Which is crucial. It really is, especially this day and age. You really do have to be ready to talk to people. It's not like it used to be. You cannot hide away for <laughs> your right. whole life and expect it to get out there. And, you know, people really do enjoy meeting the artists behind the art. And so if you can give them a little bit of a just little window into who you are they connect that they buy the art and they probably will buy more from you later on and they probably are going to tell their friend about this girl they met makes this nice art and you should buy some too and definitely it matters being able to talk to strangers and really like yeah right. be ready to talk about your art to anyone and well, good job, uh, you know, <laughs> yeah. forcing yourself to get your yep. courage and going out there and slaying yeah. your posters. So for these posters, you printed them. Did you keep the original? Yeah, paintings? I have all the originals. You didn't want to sell those? No, I was very attached to them because I was going to the show. Mm -hmm. So I only oh, made. No, it was your artifact. Yeah, for I the only memory. made poster. I would never make a poster for a show I wasn't going to. I wasn't just like. Um, like mooching off the scene I was like part of the scene I was also buying a ticket and supporting the band and going to the show and like uh -huh. very active in the scene of like yeah. the, you know I appreciated the music was partly why I was making the poster and then yeah the original was my memory of the show and now I have 60 plus like original posters all from concerts I've been to with my friends and it's Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're not. I'm not. I'd like to show them yeah, someday, you but I won't. Yeah, a show. You yeah. don't have to sell it. Just yeah, to I don't show know it. if I'll ever sell them, but mm -hmm. we'll we'll see. And once you you started getting official posters, who? What bands did you score posters with? Um, it was a variety. I did a lot of stuff with Papadocio, obviously. Um, uh -huh. they were the first ones that really were like, no, Melissa, we want like the real the festival poster to be ours or I did their like Red Rock show which was really special and um just a lot of bands I did a lot of album covers like the Magic Beans is a all buddies of mine I did their albums I did um like Good Gravy these are all Fort Collins bands but um a lot of like smaller bands and then just depending bigger stuff depending on what 
was needed, like string cheese. I've done like pin designs for them and stuff. And uh -huh. have you worked with Conscious Alliance? I have, yeah. Okay. I did a poster with them, and I'm good buddies with BJ, and yeah. Uh huh. BJ Cochran. Yeah. Okay, nice. I'm speaking with them. I've done a few posters for them, and uh, I'm, I'm working on my next book. And there's a poster section, and I'm like, that poster section. I need two or three more posters. Mm -hmm. It's not. I need a little bit more. Yeah. So I hit them up and, you know, I'll see what I, I can oh, get Oh, I'm sure that. they won't want to do some stuff. Yeah. yeah. Just like event posters is a thing on its own. The lettering. Completely and that's total thing. graphic design. Yeah. And I actually, I'm a typography nerd. Um, I like nerd out on letters and how it all goes together. And I don't have it in my art, but I, like all the posters, the lettering, everything was so important. That was... Why would you put it in your art? Um, I just, it was out of, that was four posters where my art isn't um, informational. Yeah. Other than the visual information. But the, a word can be an ingredient yeah, in the thing. Yeah, it's interesting. I like throwing a word here and there. I've been thinking of putting a word in this painting right here. This little like. Like a little thing. Yeah, I was going to say respect life. And I was. You know, I still might do that. <laughs> we'll, we'll see what happens. I'm not trying to push you to do anything. No, I, like I, I just like throwing words sometimes as another element. Yeah, and of... I think what I have a little bit of a hard time with in my art is it's all, there's nothing other than nature in it. So I have a really hard time even adding like a person, mm. which could add a ton of meaning. But I really, there's nothing but nature because the true... The true vision I'm trying to have come across is that nature is so beautiful and we need to respect it. And, like, why are we looking for other things when nature is right here in front of us, mm. like, outside of this beautiful planet? Um, so the character of your paintings is nature itself, the spirit of nature. Yes, which I'm glad you just said the spirit because I think of nature as God and you know, what makes a snail shell make that perfect spiral or a fern leaf go out in perfect, uh -huh. this, is this perfect, like, um, geometry. And it's the spirit of life yeah, also. Yeah, like, a that, code. that is what I'm painting, it's, is the code. It's the, I must live mm -hmm. and exist and die yeah. and And ever grow. expanding and just constant change and the life and death and... Um, yeah, growth, really. And there's enough meaning for me behind nature of life and death and growth and rebirth and all of the beautiful things that are happening that I haven't really felt the need to add a message past what's already, what I'm already just doing visually. I haven't. Mm. You, wanna, you don't want to spell it out. Like, but I'm, yeah, I could. I could put, like, please take care of the earth across mm. the top because that's what I am trying to say. But I also like feel like if I'm trying to have people respect the earth by seeing my art, telling someone respect the earth doesn't always work where like feeling for the earth might make them just yeah. in turn respect it. Right. Just it's from, like, oh, this looks so beautiful. I oh, love wait, nature. Oh, wait, this is more. right outside? Oh, like yeah. I'm not going to put my trash everywhere. You just presented it as a bouquet, a, composi a compositional bouquet. But it's almost like the psychedelic experience where you like, like when you say, uh, if you do changa or DMT with eyes open, oh, a sign, the medicine rearranges it in a really interesting composition that's also mm -hmm. very um, symmetrical yeah, or there's an order there's to There's a it. geometry to it. It's not random like we see yeah. things in this realm. Oh, a sign, it's like, okay, I'm going to make it very neat now. Yeah, I mean, nature is the most, psych I can't think of anything more psychedelic, really, uh -huh. like than just nature. Just be in nature. Would you say your art is psychedelic or so it, your I art was, is visionary, yeah. but it's different. It's not like you're presenting the other dimension, which is a dimension we don't see. You use ingredients from the dimension we do see, mm -hmm. but you present it in a, a psychedelic composition mm -hmm. almost. I would say that it's all just from being inspired by nature and with nature being psychedelic, it's naturally going to come off psychedelic in my work. So I feel like nature 
being psychedelic is why my art has a psychedelic aspect to it, not me trying to put a spin on things. I think the spin is already there. Mm -hmm. um, and I think what cr makes my art shape different is I'm adding composition, essentially. I'm like putting mm -hmm. the psychedelicness of nature into a composition right. that can be. But it probably won't hit psychedelic if you're not already psychedelic. Like normal people will be like, oh, trees and flowers yeah. done in a nice uh, arrangement. Mm -hmm. But they won't be all like, oh, this is spirit. This yeah. is a spirit world communicating to me right now. Exactly. And I think that uh, that's been really good for my work out of, I think it's been widely accepted by a lot of people. It's not too psychedelic where people can see it without being like, oh, I haven't done enough drugs to take this in or what, you know, like, like I can't my work. This is too much. <laughs> but um, I, I do hope that some people pick up on a level of psychedelicness who aren't psychedelic too. Cause I would right. want that person to walk into nature and be like, wait a second. That's kind of cool. How that yeah. grows like that. Uh -huh. It's like a sub subtle. Yeah. Thing. Like I would like to hint and remind people, Hey, this is there and it's really beautiful and, stop for a second and take a look. Uh -huh. Right. Well, that's, that's a really nice Trojan horse you got going because it's like you're, you're communicating spirit. The, the psychedelic wor world is just the world of spirit, mm -hmm. which is vast yeah. and expresses itself in many different ways. Mm -hmm. And you're, you're talking of that place without scaring people and being like, it's a different dimension than yours. And you're mm -hmm. like, ugh. Well, I don't know that place, so I'm gonna fear it. Yeah. Like, say, like my universe that I present is a universe that people don't know, so they're either like, "Oh, that's cute and interesting. What is it about?" Or it's like, "Oh, that shit's kind of weird because I don't understand mm -hmm. it and not for me." Like, what? Mm -hmm. it's like, oh, like monsters or creatures? Uh. But yours is like, "Oh, I know what a rock is. I know what a flower mm -hmm. is. I know what a tree is. I'm not afraid of it. I like it." Mm -hmm. So you use it as your um, your words. Yeah. If you're saying a, a sentence or a paragraph, your words are of a language that most humans know about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. And I like I would fully say that like grandmas buy my art and twelve year old kids and all in between. Like there's a it's enjoyed by both sexes, all ages. And I'm really grateful because that wasn't something I was seeking. It just like was my natural art happens to be somewhat digestible by um, like the common person. But I'm glad that I am like dripping some psychedelicness into the common person. Uh -huh. What is your psychedelic experience? I've had a lot of psychedelic experiences. I haven't gone into um, a lot of the like ayahuasca and DMT plant worlds um, at this point in my life where psychedelics have been really fun for me. But before them, I already was high on the visualness around well, us soberly. Well, everything is spirit. To start with, mm -hmm. and then we live in the, the physical plane that has matter and physicality, so we see that. But perhaps the artist, uh, if it learns to perceive, can feel the spirit inside or within these physical things that we observe with our physical eyes. And psychedelics makes that more obvious or you mm -hmm. can feel it like i don't know if i even like even if i'm not having hallucinations i feel yeah, the spirit like of a, the plant and the tree mm -hmm. and the clouds a and deeper like, knowing in right a, yeah and, and what i was telling you before is like oh like you're you're encapsulating the spirit of life and nature is because when i do aya in the rainforest i feel feel the spirit of the rainforest mm -hmm. not as a tree or a plant but as a living living entity mm -hmm. me like i am here and this is who i am and yes i sprout and mm -hmm. i i am a source of life but this is the code of god in me that is all of us mm -hmm. expressing through you know and if, if, if psychedelics bring you that great but if you can feel it without amazing yeah yeah 
that's exact. I like really like how you just put that, and that's exactly how it is. It's like it it was really nice to like get a few steps closer and really have it in my face of like this is the spirit world. Like, and then I I already had been there with been I've already been there uh-huh. with how I really felt with it, and I've already had my moment with the living moments with the living breathing earth where I already knew it was breathing you know and it was right. it's always been just like a reminder and really fun and I um like I really enjoy the festival like I've said the festival life and I think that psychedelics have brought a color to that world that I would never say has been anything but like really awesome like I'm definitely thankful for psychedelics in my life even though I wouldn't say it's like what necessarily pushed me in a direction as an artist it's just been like more like um something as a person I've grown from than something I've grown from as an artist I would Uh say it's like it it brought you resonance to who you were already yeah yeah which was really beautiful and it's been really awesome but it was definitely I was like oh well, I knew that. That that was already really cool. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Do you feel the sensitivity that you had before psychedelics is something that's in you now and something that is continually growing? Is your sensitivity, your psychic abilities, your ESP, is that something that you feel is expanding? Definitely. I... Definite, and I would say without psychedelics, I feel like it's expanding. And what's really caused that expansion is just true work on myself, my sober, true human self. Like I work with a therapist weekly. I really deeply look into how my brain is functioning, how my mental health is, how my ways of thinking are hurting or helping me. And that is what's bringing me into like a deeper knowing of myself and as a human than touching in the psychedelic worlds. Like the sober world is where I've really like developed and been able to, yeah, develop those things like ESP. And I definitely am a very sensitive person. I wouldn't say I'm psychic, but I would sort of. <laughs> like I am a little bit. So yeah, I'm, and mine's been like really coming through lately and it's really fun right yeah (laughs) uh that's beautiful that you do therapy and explore your mind through the mind yeah it's like you don't have to go to therapy from crisis no and it really is really like responsible of you as a human to sit with another human and really look at the way that you're acting and thinking and treating people and treating yourself and you can live a happier, healthier life yeah. from it. And um, I have nothing like nothing but good things to say about therapy. Yeah. And I think you can obviously get turned off by meeting the wrong therapist or having a sit- shitty situation. But if you really seek out a connection with the right person, it can be like so beneficial for your life and yeah, I, I I did some therapy this year uh, with her name was Melissa. Also, oh, that's funny. The spiritual rebel, uh, no, the spiritual misfit, and she works with plant medicine and is spiritual. So I can tell her like all my <clears throat> all my wacky points of mm-hmm. views on the world, and she like gets it. See, and- that's exactly what like you would need in a therapist is someone that's able to see that world too and right because yeah, if great. i go on me like oh yeah like you know my you, don't, you can't <laughs> you can't censor yourself you have to find someone that you don't censor yourself right. at all with and i'm in a good place in my life right now and usually you do that when you're hurting I, at least i know that if i'm hurting i got somebody to talk to that would make me really good questions and pick apart mm-hmm. aspects of my mind where i'm like how am i going to tackle this mm-hmm. you know from my higher self Mm -hmm. because it's so hard sometimes to know to know what's right we we would think that we would know exactly what's the right thing to do at every point and if that was the case we would all be doing the right thing at every move and the world would be perfect (laughs) but it seems like we shit the bed Mm -hmm. every second time Mm -hmm. yeah that's (laughs) a perfect way to put it and I think having like a 
trusted opinion on what you're doing in your life, even if it's a life coach of some sort or even a family member who is able to have a perspective that's not too entwined in your family dynamic. It's mm. um, it's just important to be talking about yourself and how you're functioning through the world. And um, I think happiness comes with it. Mm -hmm. Totally. Well, good job doing your work. <laughs> Thank you. Tell me about your medium. Um, you started with, I, I see right here, we got some yeah. watercolors. Yeah. So many colors in these watercolors. I do, um, I do a lot of mediums. I do watercolor, acrylic, and oil. Okay. And then uh, printmaking is another medium that I... I saw some etchings down there. Yeah, the etchings. That's um, a medium that I would probably say is my favorite medium, but I don't have access to the, the equipment you would need to do that. So for an etching, you need like what? Like a, a piece of metal, you carve it out? Oh, yeah. Well, well, the etching itself, it, I could get access to all that. It's like the press to run it through, the acid to like etch your image into the thing, the, the plate that you heat up to put your ink on to wipe the ink. Um, it's a... It's a, you need like a full system and that is probably like in the next 10 years, like my goal is to have, and this is turning into a like little printmaking studio. Like eventually I will do it again, but I haven't been able to in a while because uh -huh. of that. Where did you learn that? In college? Yeah. That's yeah. Great, that's where I did it too. Yeah. I even stayed an extra year in college and kind of like just messed around for a while just to keep access to the printmaking studio. Uh -huh. And that was when I made some of my most popular art still, the rock gardens, like those long um, uh -huh. etchings that are... Which is kind of very uh, inspired or correlated to Art Nouveau, correct? Definitely, yeah. And um, yeah, Art Nouveau is, if I had to pick like a base level thing, Beneath my art is Art Nouveau. Tell me about Art Nouveau. I don't know enough of it, uh, of yeah. it and perhaps the viewers also it don't know too much about a, that movement. It was a time when people were like, let's make everything around us beautiful, and let's make the door beautiful, and let's make the window be and let's make the case around the window beautiful. Is this and 20s? Yeah, in the 20s, and it was um, about composition, was everything, you know, composition is the fundamental basis of it all but it was all about making everything beautiful ornamental um adding curved lines to, to straight things um which birds the art art deco period which is like my second favorite art period i would say which um is a little bit more like plainer and straighter lines and more about design than organic design but i would say that's like where my art Sits is like right in between the Art Nouveau, um, Art Deco, and um, did they teach you also that in college in art history, or is that something you explore on your own? That was just from me being like, I love that art. I need to learn about it. You got it some was, nice books. Yeah, it was. Um, I think it was mostly just like on the internet, just going. I was laughing with a friend recently. I was like, remember when you just would go to the actual website? Like, if there was an artist you like, you'd go to, like, uh -huh. www.meredithdittmar.com. Uh -huh. And just, like, you put in the act. I was, like, remember going to, like, websites for artists. But I remember just being, like, Art Nouveau and then seeing, like, Alphonse Mucha and um, just all the other. Well, those web pages are still there. I know. I was, like, I'd say it was probably internet more than having a great book. But, but... now we're so used to Instagram. You know, know that if you put that on Instagram, you'll get, like, you know, it's the yellow pages. I, yeah, and I'm Instagram is interesting. I just it's really a great thing, but it's also really good to be seeking out your inspiration from sources and not from one place. Cause I find it to be like really obvious when all your inspiration's coming from one place where I think like seeking out you know, a lamp that's maybe Art Nouveau inspired that inspires your art versus um, looking at an artist who's currently making Art Nouveau art to inspire your art. You want right. to like... Um, you want to go to the root. Yeah, get deeper in your sources. Like the lamp just came up because there was a lamp that inspired like about three years of my art uh -huh. back in that time. 
oh, you know, that's how I knew that it, I was having original art because I was a lamp made me want to draw yeah. this plant. Yeah, not I wasn't as looking at a plant to, to draw the plant, and it was. It's just really good to um, diversify your sources mm -hmm. and. I love art books myself. I, yeah. I, I need a good library. And if I, I'm i like, okay, I want to inspire on a a certain, or organic yeah. matter, I'll go to the 19, uh, the 1840s etchings mm -hmm. of this guy and, and go through it. And like, oh, mm -hmm. yeah, this is like, you know, the root. Yeah, that's the root. You did perfect way to explain it. Yeah, you want to keep looking for the root of mm -hmm. stuff. Um, because from that, you got more space to do your own expression. Definitely. As opposed to building upon the expression of the expression of the expression, you know. It's definitely. Our... Yeah, like um, Mars One was one of my biggest inspirations of my life. I would never, ever not claim that. And I was always very worried that he would maybe think, I copied him, even though no one's ever even said to me, your art looks like Mars. No one's ever even said that, but I knew he was one of my inspirations. So I was like, wait a second. I need to not look at his website ever again. And I need to go in and start thinking of where he might have looked for those inspirations of like, um, not to copy what he did, but more just like, what are the root of those things he was even painting that I love? Uh -huh. And let me look into those things. Right to find the true roots right. where then I can know that I'm authentically leaving from the root of something versus from the root with an artist above it. And then, right. Yeah. Cause you know, to go back to nature is the ground floor. Exactly. And then from there you can sprout out yeah. while he already has a flower. And if you grow from that flower, it's going to, yeah, it will exactly. still come with some mm -hmm. of that, uh, yeah, like, uh, honestly, not looking at painters has been one of the more um, important things that I've done, I feel, is I really, I like to look at, like, ceramic artists, jewelers, sculpture. I like to look at other forms of art to get my inspiration so that I truly, like, know that there's not another artist who's like, oh, this girl just ripped me off, or, oh, this just, what? Like, I painted that. Like, I'm... Yeah. Um, well, if it makes you feel better, I don't feel your art looks like Mars <laughs> One. There's don't. a lot of other artists that, that I'm does. like. No, well, I know. That's... It's like, and it's, yeah, it's mostly that I, I know that he was a big inspiration to me. So I'm always like very like, very or I have respectful. been very careful. Like I haven't really even looked at his art very deeply lately out of, I'm like, I want to be careful with. Mm -hmm. you know knowing I love it so much it's a full it's out of respect and love that I love his art so much it's yeah. not like I'm saying I'm trying to avoid it it's yeah, like no. out of respect I we were just it. in uh, Grass Valley last month at Brand Chambers oh. place oh nice and it's full of Mars One originals oh my gosh it, and it's very inspiring you know like it's different from what I do but it's also like, oh, what if you went on this direction, but a la Chris Dyer, mm -hmm. you know? And yeah. just, you know, it, it, I, I love seeing other artists and see how their their brain works and how they do their things. Even seeing your things like, oh, yeah, I could do like a composition, but a la Chris Dyer. Yeah, that yeah, would look totally. nothing like your art, but it's a general direction. Mm -hmm. And it's good to play different mm -hmm. video games. Totally. And all artists inspire on each other. Exactly. And, and as long as you're not ripping each other off straight up, I think it's nice to bounce yeah, off. Yeah, totally. For me, I get more worried about another artist thinking I'm ripping them off, where someone rips me off, I don't care. Like, I have to have full, 100% peace inside me and knowing that this is an authentic, original image. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I'm really seeking, like not worried necessarily about what other people think. I like just have to have that feeling inside me of I'm like, nope, I'm sure I didn't rip this off. But like, I know that it, you know, people have ripped my art off. It's like, that's where you get ideas is from looking at art and making but you'd be doing a disfavor to yourself by looking like some other artist. Definitely. Like, I mean, yeah, I think that finding your original style and voice is what the universe is actually wanting to like pull out of you, not art mm -hmm. that someone else has made. So, 
yeah, I definitely, I'm, I'm very thankful. I do feel like I have a original style that's, I've like developed myself. Well, that just shows general respect. Yeah. I think is something that's good. Tell me about your business. I run a website and it has an online store and I, most of my art, I make into products, clothing. Um, I also work with a company, Warrior Within, who I collab with and make clothes and I sell prints online of all my art and I pack and ship it all myself. I Do you get like your own machine or you get them at a shop? Um, I source from all different places. I get a lot of my stuff from Canada, actually, which is Montreal, Canada. Oh, no way. Yeah. Um, What's the name of the company? Or you Art yourself? of Wear. Okay. Yeah. I used to also be a little worried to share that kind of stuff. And now yeah. I'm like, artofwear.com. <laughs> like, yeah. to, I want everyone to know. And like, It's I, not more expensive coming from a different country with uh, custom taxes? No, it's not. They, they ship their stuff to... New York, and then it ships to you, I think, is how they avoid that. Mm. And it was a small Yeah, maybe they drive it or something. Yeah, something, <laughs> it's, it's some, something they do right across the border. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I started producing a lot of stuff with them when they got started. They were a small company, and now they're really big, and a lot of my artist friends use them. And I wish I would have known about it when I was living there. <laughs> oh, that would have been you could have picked up stuff without even uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's a great company if you're doing like large quantity though it's not that great where i have other companies if i'm printing like hundreds of something i would never use art of wear i'd use a different company but um yeah i've kind of been in a little bit of a cocoon because i had a baby about uh he's 20 months old now so i kind of had set the business aside for a little while where i was Um, not closed, but I kind of had my online shop really minimal and was just trying to like land in the new skin of being a new mom where I was taking a break. You can't be going to post office every second day. <laughs> no. <laughs> and you really, it's like, I didn't want to either. It was the first time since I was 16 that I was like, oh, I'm actually going to take a break from working as hard as I do every day. And, um, so Now, 20 months later, I am starting to like get more stuff on my website. I just redid my website and um going to be a lot new product a lot of new products coming and yeah, I pack and ship everything myself and it's all made with love and everything is I seek out environmentally friendly companies, living wage companies. There's nothing um there's nothing on my site that I can't stand behind. So there's nothing printed Um, at a company with outliving wage. So, nice. Yeah, it's Congrats. really important to me. <laughs> and you being able to be ethical and still make a living as an artist? Yeah, and um, it took a really long time of finding the right diversity of income streams of, you know, you have to find multiple ways of making money as an artist. And uh, the ethical side of my products they do cost more but mm -hmm. I really needed that for my own heart like going into it like I'm not trying to produce a ton of items because my art is about the earth I can't be like making a bunch of waste be hypocritical yeah so I can't be making a bunch of plastic crappy toys in China by people who aren't paid <laughs> you know I it just like wasn't an option to not have products that I could stand behind because the environment's so important to me. And like, yeah. Mm -hmm. So you took a little bit of hiatus to create your family, but you're getting back into the rhythm. Yeah. Of yeah. Um, um, do, do your clients mostly come through your social media? Oh, I'm currently, I would say shadow banned on social media, which I think everybody is now. Yeah, <laughs> I was, I'm like, is everyone now? I think everyone is. It's the general thing I've been hearing yeah. from pretty much every single artist is like, social media is not reaching that much yeah. anymore. Yeah, my social media is not reaching anyone. Um, I was really sad about it for like a little bit. And now I'm really in a place of feeling like it was a blessing. In obviously I miss being able to reach as many people to sell my products to and make an income from but 
um, you know how much work it is to post every day. And I feel like I was able to really like focus on more like my at home life where I might not have had that um, kind of catalyst into like, hey, Melissa, you actually need to take a break from social media because you have a baby. <laughs> so I'm like glad it happened. Do I hope that my numbers start like turning around? That would be nice. But I'm not in a place of um, as upset as when it first started happening, I was like, what? We worked so hard to get these followers and now you won't show them our stuff. It it was, it's hard, but um, trying to... It's frustrating. It's frustrating. I'm trying to like um, more stay in a place of like, what are the good sides of it? Even though I know from a business point, it's really detrimental for all of us. But there's been a lot of good parts of it and I'm trying to really just stay in a place of being grateful for that core group of people that do still follow and do really care what I'm up to and I'm really grateful that you know I am still reaching a certain amount of people and I want to be grateful for them versus upset about the 40,000 that don't see my stuff you know like uh-huh. so. and, and there's still enough business coming through Yeah, I mean, things like I said, I kind of took like a little bit of a hiatus for the first time in my life, but business is definitely like picking up. And the more that I post or share on my stories, new products, like I do have people who are like, oh, I can't wait to buy that. And I, you know, I ship stuff out all the time. And I'm just so thankful for that core following I have of people that I think would probably still be buying stuff regardless if I had Instagram or not. And Mm -hmm. Um, just really thankful for the people that support my art and just people who support art in general are really helping the, (laughs) like keep buying art people. (laughs) (laughs) Um, tell me about your family life. You got a beautiful rock star boyfriend. You got a beautiful brand new human in your beautiful new home. Tell me about the blessings of your family life. You just said it all. It's all really beautiful. It's, um, Anthony's, uh, a wonderful partner. We've collaborated as artists for years. Started a romantic partnership of collaboration and love. Where do you love meet him? In, in, in Route 1? Um, I painted for them in Fort Collins in 2009. Okay. And then he was like, you should come to Root Wire. And I was like, okay. And he's like, it's in Ohio. And I was like, okay. And I went home that night and looked up where Ohio was. Because I hadn't, I was like, I've heard of Ohio. Do I know where it is in the country over there like no I had never gone that far east even I was like got my friend in the car we like took a road trip with an actual like map. road map yeah, to <laughs> Ohio um so I met him live painted for them in 2009 and then painted for them every time they were in Colorado went to all the root wires and Anthony and I kind of danced around the idea of being together but I lived in Colorado he was in a touring band and I was like not super into that like long distance like he they were gone more than they were home Mm -hmm. they traveled that much so you know yada 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 five years later it was like okay let's actually we should be together and I like decided to move here essentially to be with him but then now I would I know that it was meant to be for me to live here regardless and I'm like glad that that happened it was like all meant to be Then quarantine happened. We bought our house, um, which was like a complete fixer upper. And we've been working really, really hard on it to make it what it is now. And um, then I had a baby last September and uh, he's the greatest thing that's ever happened to me and the most creative act I've ever been a part of. And um Yeah, I'm, like, really tired, and it's really hard, and there is, like, a time constraint on the day that I've never felt before, and there's a lot of pressure, and, yeah, I really, like, miss a lot of aspects of life before having a child, but I wouldn't trade any of it for anything, and it's been the most empowering, like, amazing experience, and there's, like, 
a growth that comes from having a child that it pushes you and stretches you in ways that you couldn't even imagine where you're like, oh, I am cap more capable of human than I realized. And like, there's an empowerment that comes with that where I'm like, I can, I really feel like I'm like, I can do anything now. Like, mm. like I really, I'm like, I can do anything. Like, <laughs> like it kind of feels that way. <laughs> like I, I've been staying at, at Carl McGlass's place uh, here in Nashville painting for him and he's got free kids. And, and I tell him like, damn man, free kids. That lot. just seems like it would like make it that I would never do art again. And um, he's like, no, it's the opposite. The more I would have kids, the more I want to just go there and succeed at my art for them. Yeah. So if you want to succeed, have more kids. <laughs> I'm, there's like a crazy madness to that, but it's true in a way. And um, you really do like your time management and your, um, like what you're trying to do in the world, like it all like you have someone to like show it to now and it's all like um the inspiration that comes along with the loss of time like they all kind of cancel each other out and it's interesting just like what a time warp it all is because time slows down and you're also like manage time better so you like are in this weird flow of like what I used to be able to get done in half a day, I can get done in like an hour now. Cause I'm just like, Oh, I got one hour, <sighs> like busted out real quick. And it just all seems to like work. Um, just cause it's all worth it uh -huh. in the end, even though it's really hard, it like couldn't be more worth it. Like I wouldn't change any, I'm like so thankful for the hard part of having a child too. Like uh -huh. it's, I'm thankful for both aspects cause it is, a lot of fun and hilarious and so much love but it's really difficult too but i'm thankful for both right well the contrast of life is why we're here yeah exactly and it really the contrast is what really makes you grow uh -huh. like the right congrats on, on yeah on yeah and what about uh, your relationship with Anthony? Like you said that he was always touring. He's still always touring. Yeah. He is so, a rock star yeah. of the band, <laughs> Papadocio, probably with lots of fans out yeah. there. Oh, definitely. Liking yeah. him and stuff. Is that complicated or you're very just like, you know no, where you're at? Um, I'm not like uh, the confidence I have in the partnership we have would like stand the test of time beyond rock star life or really a lot of things. I know that we could go through really difficult times and our partnership will last. Um, yeah, I, before when I didn't like him touring as much, it was like I lived on the other side of the country and I didn't want to like date someone that I was going to see three times a year where now it's like he leaves every other weekend for like six days. And, but we, we have still have a home life together where I wasn't really just like wanting to sign up for a relationship that was so just tap in like every couple months, maybe, you know, now it's, he tours a lot, but we still have a life together at least. And, mm -hmm. and yeah, eventually the touring, once I was like comfortable with it, it became like a blessing because I had my time to do my art. It was like, okay, bye. Like, see you later. I'll get to work now. <laughs> uh -huh. That's beautiful. So, yeah, and he's wonderful, and we um, feel really fortunate to both be in the same scene and both care about the same scene and really feel like um, we were a part of helping it grow and we want to, like, still be a part of the growth in it, and we feel like a lot of um, kind of care towards what's happening, and we really want to be like a part of the beautiful scene for years and years to come. And mm -hmm. and, and you're about to go together to Secret, to Secret Dreams. Dreams. Yeah. He's performing three times, mm -hmm. radio headset. Yeah, I can't wait for the radio headset. And you'll be a roaming artist, just yeah. like painting. Yep, I started my painting. It's back there. I normally go in with a blank canvas, but what I wanted to paint happened to have quite a bit of geometry, so I'm like, Pre prepping a little bit, but I'll be starting a painting there. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Where do you see uh, 
both the festival scene and the visionary art scene moving to. You've seen it move a certain direction mm -hmm. and we're here now. It almost seems the end of the line because we haven't moved into the future yet. But what do you imagine could happen to this direction we're going to in a world that seems like it tears itself apart sometimes, but we always want to show up with love and unity. It is really an interesting question that I haven't put a ton of thought into because I'm more still like processing even what's currently happening in the scene because there's so much going on always. But um, like I see electronic music and live music of bands. I see them kind of separating like this and I um, I don't love that and I really don't think that's what it was about like bands and electronic musicians never were like, yeah. And then in 10 years, let's separate and both have our own festivals. And like, uh -huh. so that's um, what's happening as yeah. EDM becomes more mainstream. Yeah. They're kind of like going and their I'm, own way. Or it just seems that way. Like festivals are separating it all more. You'll see it. Secret dreams. It's very separate. And I just think that it's um, really important for people to still see people play instruments and I have nothing against electronic music. I love electronic music and I want it at the festival. I just, I don't think separating them is a good idea. And I think that younger generation, it's still good to see people playing instruments in a collaboration together versus just one person. Like I think showing collaboration is important. That's what the festival scene is built on is us all collaborating together. So. I just hope that live bands don't fade out in a way. Yeah, do you think that could happen? I it guess not like fade out, maybe a separation. I hope yeah. there's not too much of a separation. I don't, like the visionary art scene doesn't seem to be able to separate into... It seems like like just artists in general are welcome. Like, I'll do a festival that's all bands. I'll do a festival that's all electronic. Yeah. They all like trippy art either way. It's totally. It's not like my art's tied into a kind of music. More like I, I hope that the visionary art scene doesn't start to separate where some people are like, uh, oh, I only want to paint yeah. at electronic shows or like because i'd be sad if i didn't get to see a lot of those artists that are my friends like i think it's good that we're all still together and i don't necessarily think that the scenes need to separate would right. be the way that i would well i guess it's like a personal option i'm sure some painters rather go to electronic music Definitely. festivals and they're not into crunchy uh live bands and vice versa totally me myself i'm more into bands but not even the like, bands. You'll, the... you'll see it, Secret Dreams. They're very separate with a long walk in between. And that doesn't feel the way that... Nothing against Secret Dreams. that They're they're yeah. making a great festival for but all of us. But the same at Hula. More just, you know, yeah, like I don't think it needs to be side. separated. And I think that they're... It's not really showing what festival life is. Festival life is inclusive. It's togetherness. It's not separate. It's not separate. Right. Like we want to be a microcosm reflection yeah. of what we want to see in the world. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, um, but, but I, no fights, I have a, right? what? It's not like the, the band fans fight the electronic musical fans. Perhaps no, they're just different vibes. I'm just hoping it doesn't become a, a time where you can't go to a festival and see a band and an electronic mm. act. I would like to see both. Why, why do you think it's being separated? Do you think there's just like different audiences? I just started and... to, even at Electric Forest, it didn't used to be separate and now it's separated. Bands kind of mostly in one area, most stages and then the whole triple E electronic only. Um, and I'm not saying it's a bad thing because I want people to be able to go see what they want to see. I just don't think separating too much is a good idea because when it really comes down to it, people should be able to see both. Like, yeah. you should be able to see a band. Do you think they're not thinking that it would be separated and that it's just a way for people to bounce from side to side of the festival? Hoping that people will like it all? Um, people do bounce. Like, I bounced last year. Uh -huh. It's more that um, when they put only bands on one stage and only electronic artists on one stage, they're right there separating it. Uh -huh. So, like, 
some attendees might not even make it over to the one stage or mm -hmm. vice versa because mm -hmm. they're 20. They're having the time of their life. They got all spun up with their group of friends and then they forgot to go see the music uh -huh. or vice versa. They didn't get to see the crazy electronic stage that's over way over in the trees mm. across the festival where you don't even know where, you know, it, it gets a little bit like, um, I don't think it needs to be separate. Yeah. And I think that it's a good thing when it's all together. <laughs> so, how do you see it as a as a microcosm to the world? Do you think we're being separated on our? It seems like like humans keep on getting divided, divided, divided into like compartments. Mm -hmm. Like there's not even like a musical performer anymore that everybody knows. Yeah. Like say like back in the day, everybody liked the Rolling Stones or the mm -hmm. Beatles. Now, I don't even know what's popular If you popular could say that world. as, yeah. Um, There's like super mega stars that I don't even know That's interesting. Yeah, I do think that we're living in probably the most separated time of the planet, probably. Um, I think social media has been a huge proponent in that, just in it creates separateness. It like tries to make everyone go in their own side. Um, I think that everything has an ebb and flow, and I'm hoping that this separateness swings back into a realization of connectedness and that we need each other. Um, and then it probably will go back. Like, I'm hoping that this is just a natural ebb and flow and we're going to swing back into. But I do think we're in a very separate time, and that probably is a reflection of, like, the separateness I've been feeling at festivals. Because I never really felt that until the last, four or five years where stuff was like, oh, that's the electronic stage. Yeah. Like, that's weird because <laughs> kids still hooked up with speakers. Can't a band play there? And Right. Or just, yeah, it's... Just switch it Really, up. I loved Root Wire when they had the two stages, just boom, boom, boom. We're all in one place enjoying uh -huh. each other. Right. Yeah. Hmm. Like, I want to still see all my friends. So when you... It's, you know, I just... I want the festival community to stay true to its roots of what we're here to do is be together and then enjoy music and art. But what we're really here to do is be together. Right. That's why we all decided to do this instead of watching this on our computer or listening to it uh -huh. on the stereo. You know, we well, thanks for sharing that. I, I, did, I haven't, like, I, I guess I noticed, but I didn't really think too much about it. Yeah. I just think like, oh, This demographic of younger kids wants their DJs and mm -hmm. wants their specific drugs and this Which is their is, bubble and their yeah. and that. And I'm like not knocking any scene. It's more that I think there's totally room to mesh them more. Right. It's good that if they're exposed with different mm -hmm. things so that mm -hmm. we can grow. and Yeah. And I know. want someone who's an electronic fan to see a band that they enjoy and I want someone who only likes bands to maybe check out an electronic artist. They've It's good for both of them because that way each one of those demographics uh, or performers gets both demographics mm -hmm. and more exactly. audience and yeah. etc. Like I don't think it's good really for anyone to be trying to separate, st separate stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for your reflections. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and uh, thank you for uh, wanting to talk to me today. It was really interesting. I learned so much about yeah. you and all the beautiful things that you do. Would you have some final words of wisdom to the different people, lots of them artists that watch yeah. you to this show? Um, I think one of the main things I say to young starting artists is just don't wait. A lot of people will be like, oh, I'm going to start painting once I buy a set of paints. Like, don't wait, use the supplies you have and just start making art and make it a practice more than this thing that you're putting off till the circumstances are all in place. Um, I have this like wonderful studio now, but I used to like sit on a couch in the corner of like an apartment with roommates and like had this little table in front of me and I was using crappy paints and Still making the art and it's really important to like use what you got and make art instead of waiting for what you want to make art. I'd also say like uh, it's going to take a long time to actually be able to take the image from your head and put it onto canvas and have it look like what you had in your head. So don't go into it expecting that and 
hope that maybe once you put the hours in that might happen but don't expect that or else it's going to be pretty like jarring disappointing yeah (laughs) um and I just think that like the more you can be easy on yourself and just be proud of yourself for doing the work rather than what the work looks like is really important for a young artist nice beautiful well thank you so much sweet Melissa. lastly (laughs) (laughs) not to get all bob barker on you but spay and neuter your animals (laughs) we need to control the pet population it's out of control and it's up to us only humans responsibility please spay and neuter your animals (laughs) really all right cool i don't get pets so yeah i'm long term i could see myself having like a dog rescue up here and i really have a bleeding heart for animals but i just just people need to be responsible with their pets yeah, you should not go to my farm in Peru. Those dogs, every time I go to Peru, there's like double the amount of dogs. By now, I think my parents got like yeah, they need to, 15, 20. They need to neuter those dogs. You just kind of like just... Yeah, yeah I guess. So I don't know. There's like, just so there's many also, by now. Things are different in other <laughs> countries that are more set up for stray animals. The U.S. Mm-hmm. is not yeah. really... Um, Stray animals don't do as well here, and it's yeah. Our dogs are not stray; they stay in the yeah. compound, and the Until reason why they and multiply is because the, na- the the neighbors' dogs break in the walls at oh. a certain part of the year where that our our, yeah. our female dogs start smelling. Mm-hmm. They get horny. They break right. in. Yep. They have their way with all of our pets. We need to take the whole load of dogs to the place and get them all spayed so that doesn't happen and even though it's the neighbor's fault you still got it <laughs> all right you heard her mom papa mama yeah. you heard her <laughs> sorry M- mr and mrs dyer <laughs> cool well thank you so much yeah, thank sweet you. melissa it was really... so beautiful talking to you Woo! <laughs> And thank you guys for tuning in to another episode of Chris Dyer's Creative Friends. Make sure to like, comment, share, subscribe, and spread in the good vibes that we have here for you. And I'll talk to you next time. Blessings! Next episode, Gavinger! I, I wasn't getting those lessons. I wasn't having those aha moments that initially led me to psychedelic medicines, those moments where I really found myself and I really, you know, worked through things and really, yeah, really explored myself, really explored the world, explored, like, thought patterns and how things just, like, work all around. And, uh, yeah, it, it stopped providing that for me. It, it, um, it led me, instead of leading me closer to my true self, it started to pulled me away from that and I felt that and you know so I, I made the choice so please make sure to subscribe like comment and share big thanks and see you next episode peace